All right, so a lot of people don't know the full picture when it comes to HashiCorp's Packer. They don't they don't get the full they don't understand the full DevOps lifecycle with regards to HashiCorp Packer, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how I'm going to explain why you should be executing Packer on effectively a daily basis inside of your organization. All right, Packer is a tool for building machine images, AMIs, Amazon machine images, as well as many, many, many other types of images and it's really really good at it there's more than that than packer that kind of meets the eye that that, that is apparent from the get-go and essentially there, there are two things that we sh we need to kind of cover in this video and that's the devops life cycle and where packer fits inside of that life cycle and the reason why you should be executing it every single day within your organization so packer doesn't doesn't come if you think about the the whole pipeline process, the whole DevOps cycle. Packer doesn't actually start at the very beginning. So Packer is one of the first things, it's kind of chicken and egg. Packer is one of the first things that gets executed, but it's actually the very second thing to be executed because the first thing that comes before that is Ansible. So you have to define your Ansible and you have to define your Ansible in order to be able to build Packer images, or sorry, AMIs via Packer that are capable of being up to date they, they can be updated the operating system is updated the kernel is updated and everything you're doing via via ansible such as installing any software that you need adding users adding services enabling those services they all need to be they all need to be managed and ansible is the answer there so the first the devops life cycle if you think about this like you're kind of doing this from the beginning the first thing is, is actually ansible the second thing then is packer because what you do is you you reuse that Ansible code and you introduce it to your packer templates and you use it to configure the AMIs with as much information as you can upfront with packer. So you want to you want to embed as much as you can into your packer templates from the get-go so that when you're launching EC2 instances, they've they're ready to go much much quicker. You don't need to set up as much as you would do if you were starting with a fresh Ubuntu 1804 installation, for example. So that's one of the things that people don't don't realize that you don't you don't just build an, an AMI using packet at the very beginning and then start unloading your Ansible on top of it it's actually you build all your Ansible first put your systems into the state that they need to be in and then you incorporate that Ansible into the packet so that's the first that's number one that's point number one that we need to cover okay the second point that I want to cover is then what people don't do is they don't automate packer going forward so here's what you should actually do with packer right Packer should be building fresh AMIs for you nightly. So you should have it on a cron job or you should have it inside of a GitLab CI pipeline on a schedule. So it's just running at say midnight or one o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning or whatever. And it should be executing for you and it should be building a fresh new AMI every, every, every single night for you. And the reason for that is because kernels get updated, packages get updated, software that you're using Nginx, Apache, MariahDB, Postgres, MySQL gets updated over time. And you should be, from a security perspective, using the latest and greatest that you can get your hands on as soon as possible. That's been validated and is stable. Obviously not beta software or alpha releases of software or, or nightly builds of software, but the, just the stable versions of that software. And you should be getting the latest of those every night. Well, Packer can do that for you. So the second stage that a lot of people don't realize is you should actually be incorporating Packer into a automated overnight pipeline so that it's building a new AMI for you every night. And then what you do is you configure further down the pipeline, you configure your Terraform, your infrastructure, to pull the AMI dynamically using things like tags and then always requesting the latest version of the AMI that is discovered via those tags. That way, if you have your Terraform run when you upgrade your infrastructure, you'll always use the latest version of the AMI, which you know has been has been kept up to date for you. You could use Amazon's managed, some of Amazon's managed AMIs, but they obviously don't incorporate the stuff that you need in order to execute your actual infrastructure. And so that's why it's very powerful to actually understand the packet isn't a one shot piece of software. You don't just build an AMI and then put it on the shelf and you're done. And then that AMI just gets reused. It's something that should be continuously included in your DevOps life cycle throughout the throughout your organization and throughout your the lifespan of your entire infrastructure so don't just build an ami and then just leave it make sure it's building amis for you every single night so that you know the operating system and all those packages that you rely on 
are being updated every single night and so that your AMI, what you're injecting into your Terraform and therefore into your infrastructure and therefore into production and therefore on the public internet is as secure as it can be. That's what you should be doing with Packer. So I hope this has given you a better idea of where Packer fits into the CICD process. I hope this gives you a better idea of how you should be using Packer in order to enable and help you with your security policies. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, then hit that like button because that tells me that the content that I'm producing is desirable. It's what you want to see. And don't forget to claim your Discord invite code as well. So head on over to www.thecloud.coach slash community. Hit that invite button, load up Discord and come and join the community. And if you have any questions about, about the stream, about the channel, any videos you'd like to see, any topics you'd like to see covered, then come have a chat. Or if you just want to have a chat with other, other DevOps, other systems engineers, then that's fine too. So until next time, stay safe.